Electricity rates in California are so much higher than the national average, and they have been going up steadily year after year, and people don't understand why this is happening. And when you ask politicians, they say, well, climate change. Well, climate change isn't happening just in California. What's happening just in California? Policy changes, supposedly for climate, which don't really accomplish anything, are raising your electricity bill. So, for example, there is a tax, it's a hidden tax called the cap and trade program on electricity generation plants. They are essentially charged for running their motors and it's because they're emitting greenhouse gases. So for every ton of greenhouse gas emissions, they have to buy a permit and they have to pay into a greenhouse gas reduction fund. And of course you pay that as a consumer. That raises the price of electricity. It also raises the price of gasoline and diesel fuel and everything that is made or moved in California. Anything moved by truck is more expensive because of this hidden tax. So this is making your electricity rates go up and up. And what else is making your electricity rates go up and up? These mandates and targets and goals that the legislature has been passing year after year, going back to about 2006, they've been passing mandates for using renewable energy. So the utilities have to go sign contracts, long-term contracts, to procure solar energy and wind energy. And they can't sign long-term contracts for natural gas or nuclear because they're supposed to get off of natural gas and nuclear. Well, how's that working out? If you go to CAISO.com, C-A-I-S-O, that's the California Independent System Operator, and you click Today's Outlook, and then you click Supply, you can see how it's working out. Not all that well. We are not even close to being able to run this state on so-called renewable energy or 100% clean electricity as defined by 2045. It's in state law. We have to be 100% off carbon-based fuels by 2025, 2045 for electricity. It's not going to happen. The sun goes down and every night California runs on natural gas, nuclear, large hydroelectric, and imported electricity. And this is why it's so expensive. So what is Governor Newsom doing? He is, he is pushing for more spending for more wind, offshore wind, and more solar, and more battery storage. But the technology isn't there, and it's very expensive. Just as an example, batteries sound like a great idea. You store all that solar energy during the day, you have batteries that give it to you all. They run out by midnight. So at seven o'clock in the evening, we're getting maybe seven or eight percent of the state's electricity needs met by batteries. By 10 o'clock, it's almost nothing, and by midnight, it's out. So that's not the solution. We are running the state on natural gas. But guess what? California has plans to shut down the gas-fired electricity plants and to shut down the one nuclear electricity plant. And we are relying on natural gas. You can see it for yourself at CAISO.com, C-A-I-S-O.com. We are running sometimes 55, 60% on natural gas. So all of these crazy programs that they're talking about, replace your gas stove with an electric stove, when you plug it into the wall, it's running on natural gas. When you plug your electric car into the wall, and it charges all night, it's running on natural gas. And it's going to be for the foreseeable future because solar and wind, they're intermittent, they're not reliable, they're very expensive, they take a lot of land, land that could be used for other things, more productive uses, lots of land being used for solar farms and wind farms, and then you need transmission lines because you're traveling a long distance from where the electricity is generated to where it is used, and the whole thing is just more and more expensive. And the utilities in California have been mandated to do this, mandated to switch over, to invest in more of this. And they're investing in it. And guess who's paying for it? You are, on your electricity bill. One of the things that's particularly expensive is a new mandate for clean trucks, so-called clean trucks. This is a new rule. It's not legislation. It's a new rule that comes to us from regulators at the California Air Resources Board. What does this do? This is going to require all the trucks, the medium duty trucks, to be switched over to electric from what they're currently running on. Garbage trucks, street repair vehicles, all the, all the vehicles that cities 
and counties and the state use for all the services they provide will have to be switched over to electric. Who's going to pay for that? The taxpayers. And who's going to pay for the charging infrastructure that the utilities have to put in place to charge all of these trucks? Guess what? The California Public Utilities Commission has said the rate payers can pick up the cost for that. So that cost will be passed through on your electric bill. This is making electricity very expensive. So this is counterproductive if the goal is to persuade people to use more electric vehicles and to use more electric appliances and to get off of gas. This is counterproductive because you're raising the cost of electricity. So what's the solution that the legislature came up with? Well, in 2022, in the space of about three days, they passed a last minute budget bill with a provision in it that required the utilities, the investor owned utilities, that's PG&E, San Diego Gas and Electric, Southern California Edison, requires them to create a rate structure that raises a fixed charge above what it currently is, I think it's $10 now, fixed charge for being connected to the grid, raises it based on your income, based on household income. They have to have different tiers of cost for the fixed charge for electricity, and the higher your income, the more you'll pay. Well, how is that going to work? It's a catastrophe to do something like this, but they're trying to hide the fact that the policies they are pursuing are raising the cost of electricity so high that people can't pay it. During the pandemic, people fell far behind on their electric bills, on their utility bills. And in the budget bill, money was put forward to bail people out, to pay what they called the arrears charges, the arrearage, I think they called it, the money that people owed on their electric bills to bail out people who couldn't pay. How many times are we going to be able to do that? We can't just keep pursuing a policy that raises the cost of electricity and then look for ways to have the rich subsidize the poor or to have the state subsidize everybody. The policy is failing. The policy itself is failing. We will never be able to get to 100% so-called clean electricity with the technology that currently exists. And mandating it when the technology doesn't exist as if somehow it's going to appear out of the air, once you mandate it, someone will think of something, that's very expensive. That's, that's risking people's future on really just wishful thinking. So it has to stop. And what people in California should understand is that these are policy choices that can be reversed. The legislature can extend those target dates. It doesn't have to be 2045, it could be 2085. It doesn't have to close the gas-fired plants or prohibit new gas-fired plants. It could say, well, we're not there yet, 2085. They could extend it and the world would not come to an end. What California is doing is not really affecting the climate because California is too small in the global climate. It's only 1% of all greenhouse gas emissions globally. And China's burning coal, and India's burning coal, and Germany's burning coal. And if you believe that burning coal is bad for the climate, then what we're doing in California doesn't offset that. All we're doing is trying to model the right behavior. And even if you think that's true, how much do you want to pay for it? And why should just California be paying for it? This is just not a good policy. This is the reason. The people you're voting for are causing the problems that are causing you to move out of California. So one of the arguments that you hear from people is that they're very concerned that we shouldn't go back to the days of heavy smog. Everybody remembers if you lived in California in the 60s and the 70s that we had smog days and you, we had brown air. You can still see it in old television shows. If you're watching an old detective show that was shot in Los Angeles in the 70s, you can see that brown haze in the air. Nobody wants that. But look at the skies today. It's not there. We don't have the brown haze there. So where we are right now is we have spent a lot of money changing car technology, changing truck technology, cha changing over to natural gas from coal. We have done a lot of things that have cleaned up the air. And it is clean. We don't have the brown haze anymore. Nobody's suggesting we go back to that. The question is where do we go from here? Where do we start now? Do you want to shut down natural gas plants and try to run on solar energy which isn't sufficient, then what happens? We don't want to go back to pollution, but we've done a lot to remove pollution. And maybe we should look at where we are now and say, 
This was an accomplishment. We've paid a lot of money for it, and this was an accomplishment. Job well done. What's next? If what's next is shut it down so that we don't use gas and we don't have reliable nuclear power, and what we're relying on is intermittent solar and wind, how do we operate our society? I'll tell you how we operate our society. What the plan is, this was part of a, of a law that Governor Newsom signed in 2022. The plan is for so-called demand response programs. That's a fancy way of saying they want you to use less electricity. So there are plans to work out a, a program where they will incentivize people to agree in advance to have their electricity shut off when demand exceeds supply, like on a hot summer day or that Labor Day weekend that was so warm and we almost, we almost had blackouts or that August in 2020 when we did have blackouts. They want to be able to manage the demand by shutting off people's electricity from the utility during these periods of time. Well, that can be extremely dangerous and I don't think a lot of people are going to volunteer for it. So how is that going to work exactly? And of course the answer is we don't know yet. But that's on the drawing board. That has been funded in the California budget with I think a couple of hundred million dollars to try to work out a way to have what they called dispatchable demand response, dispatchable reduction of customer load. That means turning off the electricity from, from central command somewhere, turning off the electricity on people. That's not a plan for California. We should have abundant energy. We should have safe nuclear technology as they do in other countries and as they do on nuclear submarines. We should have safe nuclear technology or we should have more gas-fired plants that are new and clean burning. Of course we have to be concerned about pollution. Nobody wants to go back to the days of smog alerts. But from where we are now, we have to think about where we're going next. And if we're going back to candles and wood burning, that's not good for the air either. So we have to keep the lights on in California. If you haven't checked out CaliforniaInsider.com, we highly recommend you do that now because we're going to have a lot of news and videos there. And on top of what we have there right now, we are building a really big platform to cover what's happening in California. So you can be informed. We're going to have more shows, more videos from all aspects of life in California. Go to CaliforniaInsider.com and we'll see you there.